Howdy folks, welcome back for another Feature Friday. I'm your host, Ryan Glover, and this week I'm unprepared. So last week I was out of town and I, I talked to you from a little little law library type of thing. Um, and this week I'm back and the week flew by. I completely forgot that I needed to do this uh, either last night or this morning. Usually I, I just kind of flip based on the week. Uh, but I completely forgot and I was partway through my morning. I was like, oh, right, I got I to gotta do one of these. Um, so at the moment, just to kind of catch you up, uh, the thing that I've been working on a lot lately is the revenue tracking feature inside of command. And I'm, if I had to give it a number, I'm probably about 95% there, but I ran into an issue. So the issue I ran into was the, the calculations that I do on the data that I, I import from Stripe, those are working great, but they're only working great with smaller data sets. So if it's uh, importing an account that uh, only has maybe a few months or maybe up to a year of data, no big deal. But I'm finding that as soon as that crosses about the year mark where I've got, uh, I, I'm noticing there's like an average of like 10,000 to 20,000 events. Getting the data is fine, but running the calculations that actually tell me, uh, you know, how much monthly recurring revenue did somebody have or something like that, all of those things are starting to break down. And they're, they're working, but they take forever to finish. So my numbers have been going from, uh, it takes maybe a max five minutes to, to import and calculate the data, all the way up to last night I had to go to bed, it was taking so long, and I woke up and it was like three or four hours, which is it's not gonna work. So what I need to do there is convert some of the code or take some of the code that I've got, and I'm gonna port it over to, I think, an, uh, I'm gonna do an AWS Lambda function. And so what I decided today was, I'm gonna show you something that's not really code related, but still kind of plays into uh, the process of how I think about building features and all that stuff, because I do have some future work I wanna plan for. Uh, and then if everything works out in terms of that Lambda function, uh, what I'm gonna do is, is work at least in part with you through how I did that next week. So we'll, we'll see where I get with that, but kinda of to, to set the, the stage for what's going on this week. So what I have in front of me here, uh, is a completely random uh, design on a website called Dribble, And you may be like, oh, what's the point of this? So what I thought would be interesting to talk about, because I didn't, I don't think I really covered this in my, my last series that I did on how I develop a feature from scratch, because there's technically a lot of work that happens before uh, I actually get to the coding of the feature, the, the actual design of the feature. And that pre-work is me trying to figure out, well, what is this thing going to look like and how is it going to work? So what I wanted to talk about is how I go about mining for ideas, how I look around and how I actually kind of conceptualize what something's going to look like. So if we go back over here inside a command, I've got this specific type of layout. I've got a sidebar on the left and I've got my content on the right. That wasn't a mistake. That came through me doing research and kind of picking out well, okay, this, this kind of layout makes sense for this type of app, or I see a lot of apps of this nature using this layout. And so I wanted to explain, well, how, do, how exactly do I get to that? So again, this is completely random. So what I've got in front of me uh, on Dribble, so Dribble, the whole basketball theme is, is pretty played out. And Dribble is a design site where designers all over the world can upload what they're working on. Uh, so you can see some people are doing illustration work, some are doing user interface work, and it just kind of runs the whole gamut. And I really like this site uh, primarily for the UI design aspect. There are some cool illustrations, but that's not really why I use it. Uh, but more so on the UI side, I find that there's a lot of great examples and great ideas that are just floating around. So what I want to explain is when I first have an idea, or I kind of come up with, okay, I want to build this feature. I want to build something. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll stop and think like, well, what are other people doing? Because generally speaking, despite, you know, the obvious hubris of being a developer, most ideas are not original. Somebody else has done it. Maybe they haven't done it as well as you think you can, but somebody else has done something relating back to your idea. So typically what I'll do is I'll pull up websites like dribble here and I'll just kind of search for what I'm after and right now the thing that I'm starting to put together in my head is the customer management side of command so that's what I think I'm going to tackle next so down here I've got 
uh, inbox customers, docs instead. I think I'm gonna work on this customers feature next and primarily because it's, it's something I've had in my head for a while and it's technically pretty simple, which will be a nice kind of pull back from the, the revenue feature I've been working on. So typically what I'll do is I'll kind of think about generic terms that describe that. So in this case, I'm thinking about a CRM or customer relationship management. And so I'm on the website Dribble, but I, I use a few different sites and I'll also just pull stuff from things I see. So a good example is Product Hunt. Um, I don't come here too often, but on occasion somebody might send me a link and then I'll spend you know a few minutes kind of digging through. But what I'm always doing is just kind of keeping aware of little details. Whether or not they're immediately relevant to me or not doesn't matter. So usually I'll start on Dribble. So I'll just search for whatever my topic is. And in this case, CRM, so customer relationship management. And I just kind of like comb through whatever shows up. So I find things that look interesting. It's like, huh. Like I kind of like the, the style of this calendar. It's nice and soft. And I like the way the navigation here is laid out. And I just like the, the overall treatment of this design. So uh, kudos to Michael Parolsky. I, I completely, uh, uh, what's that called? What is that when you um, butchered it? There you go. Uh, so what I'm going to do, because I like this, I'm going to save this. So on Dribble, when you have an account, they have this feature called buckets, or I think they just shifted it to lists. Uh, and so you'll notice I've got a bunch of different ones. I've got my biggest one is this good UI. So it's got 536 shots in it. So you can kind of kind of understand that I, I do this pretty regularly, and I've been doing it for a long time. So here I've got commands. So I like this for... Uh, some of the stuff I'm thinking in terms of uh, calendars and dates and sorting by events. So notice I typed in CRM, which is managing customers, but occasionally I'll find stuff that kind of maps back to other parts of the product or other ideas that I have. And so I'll just log those at the same time. I don't really think too much about it. And so I'll kind of go through and like a lot of the time, some it's, it's not the greatest, uh, but sometimes I do see uh, little details that I like. So... Uh, I'm not going to bore you too much here, but like this, I love this. There's there's something about this layout that that stands out to me, and I like the colors and all that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hang on to that. So the point here is that what you're doing is deliberately putting aside time to go and find things that you like as kind of inspiration for what you're doing, and this is where you start to to uh, kind of tiptoe up to the line of copying versus stealing, and the whole quote of. Uh, good artists copy, great artists steal. So when I think about when I when I think of the word steal, I don't mean literally taking this exact design, these exact colors, this exact layout, and stealing that one for one. That's the copy side of that quote. So that would be a good artist. It's like if I could copy this one for one, uh, I'm, there's some talent involved because it's it's not the easiest design to build. Uh, but where stealing gets interesting is when you don't just copy it one for one, you just pluck out little details. So Something I see in here that I really like is like this icon right here and how it's juxtaposed against this text on this, this message. Keep in mind, so if I was going to copy this, I would literally design it exactly like this. Same color, same font, size, same everything. If I was going to steal it, I might say, you know what? I'm going to adapt this design where I've got like an icon to the left, a title and a description, and then a button, and then it's kind of wrapped in this panel. I might steal that by taking it and adapting it to my own style. So visually for a user, unless they're super discerning or they happen to come across this video, uh, they're not going to know that I took that from somebody else. Uh, so that's what you're kind of getting at with stealing. Like you're looking for little details and you, it, it takes time to develop an eye for this. This, this is years and years of practice here. Uh, so like over here, I like this icon and I like how the little notch sticks out that says like, oh, this is the active one. I, I might steal something like that or like, I like how this, this progress bar, let's see if we can zoom in. There we go. So this progress bar, I really like how it's just two-tone. It's got the, the, the unfilled state is like a slightly grayed out color and the active state or the completed state is like a really bright, obvious color. I like that. I love how the, the icons are down here. I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna really uh, abuse this one. Uh, but the point here is that you're not just copying, you're, you're kind of looking for details. And I've found that when I'm going to build features, this is a great way to get started uh, because it really does help you to kind of form in your head what might this look like. And it, it removes an element of carelessness about what you're doing because it's technically speak like a CRM feature, for example. 
it's pretty basic, right? It's a list of customers and maybe you can click on a customer and see some details and things like that. Technically, it's not that challenging. But what you want to do is you want to think from the customer side of things like, well, how are they going to experience this? So it's less of putting a burden on the customer by making the UI simple for you to build as the developer or to design as the developer and more so thinking about like, well, I can put a few extra days into this to make it so that uh, the customer experience is really great. Maybe it's a burden on me technically to get it implemented, but it's worth considering how can I improve it. And so things like this make it really easy to kind of ideate and figure out like, oh, okay, what do I want to do here? So this is, this is one thing that I do. And then the other one, and really you can use any tool, but I've found this one is great. So this is called Dropmark. And Dropmark allows you to just go and take screenshots of entire websites and, and save bookmarks and all this stuff in one place. So this is kind of like my visual bookmarking tool. And you'll notice I've got stuff from all over the place. So like one that I loved recently was this. So the, the folks at Panic Software, if you've never heard of them, they build a, a lot of really good uh, Mac software. And one of the things that they, they I think it's still available, but they're, it sounds like they're shifting their strategy. Um, they built an app called Coda, which is a text editor or an IDE. So uh, Coda was like a, an early version of something like a VS Code or an Atom. It was really, really well done. And the other day, the team who built that, Panic, they announced that they're working on a new text editor and ID. And I really love the way that they did these colors. Now, keep in mind, I'm probably not going to design a UI that looks like this. This is, this is pretty loud. It's got a very specific thing. So maybe if I got hired by like a Hollywood movie to design an interface for like a spaceship, I would probably consider this. Uh, but in general, I just, I just grabbed it because I thought it was fun. And there is some nice stuff in here. Like there's little details. Like if you look very closely, hopefully it's, oh, perfect. We can zoom in. So if you look at the text, it's got like a nice glow around it. And so I don't have any immediate use for that, but those sorts of little details, you can kind of put them in your head and say like, ah, maybe I can find something for that. So again, none of this is really going to play into command necessarily. Uh, it might in some ways. But it's, it's not about that. It's about constantly developing a collection of ideas that you can always come back to. Kind of thing like a, it's kind of cheesy, but like a visual well that you can go back to. Uh, so if we keep going through here, there's, I mean, there's tons of stuff in here that I've grabbed. So sometimes I'll grab it because I like the layout. So like this one I came across the other day, I really liked. Um, so the service, let's see if I can zoom back out. There we go. So the service Aptable. Um, I really loved the way that the pricing page was done, and I think I might borrow some ideas from that or steal some ideas uh, for how uh, I do the, the command pricing. And I like these, these sliders and all this stuff, like really nice stuff. Um, so that's pretty much it. Again, I'm kind of in an in-between state this week uh, in terms of, of getting my work done. Oh, actually, I take that back. There's one little detail that I want to show you, and this is the evil side. This is the evil genius side of this. So I know that... Intercom, uh, which is, if you've never heard of Intercom, they do, uh, it's, it's CRM software, but it's a little different than that. So they're really good with like targeted messaging and things like that. And part of that solution includes being able to maintain a customer list. Um, but they have just a really nice way that they handle things. So another part of what I'll do, uh, especially if I'm building software, because technically I'm going to end up competing with these folks, is I'll go find competitors and, one second, Alexa, stop. There we go. We're good. Um, I'll go and find competitors and just kind of figure out what are they doing or how are they doing it or why are they doing it. So like over here, I really like the way they're showing this customer's details. So I might borrow from something like that or the way that they're explaining things. Again, the point isn't to copy one for one. The point is to go and find little details like the way this text is displayed. So I really like that you've got this title and then this description, learn more. And then there's like this little qualifier right here beneath that. So it's kind of reinforcing whatever's going on right here. So again, just little details. And again, you're trying to build up a library in your head and preferably use a tool like this. So again, this is Dropmark and then this website, Dribble, uh, lets you save stuff. Uh, preferably you're using a tool like that, but you're always kind of looking for little details that map back to what it is you're trying to build, like right here. I, I know that at some point, I can't tell you when, but at some point in the future, I'm going to do a mobile version of command, and I really like the way this is set up. 
So it's, it's just a process of constantly being aware and picking things out. And I found that when you do that, it's very, very easy to develop unique software or software that stands out as kind of different from everybody else. Uh, so that's it. Um, take it as you will. Hopefully this was interesting or hopefully this was useful. Um, I would have liked somebody to tell me this back in the day because I, I kind of stumbled into it. I just naturally gravitated toward like taking screenshots of things and being kind of obsessive about it. Um, but hopefully if you're just getting started, know that there's absolutely nothing wrong with this as long as you're not, you know, verbatim copying folks. Uh, I think this is a great way to figure out how to de design your own UI, but also figure out how you might implement the functionality of a feature that you're working on. So again, I'm going to keep this one short. Uh, hopefully I'll have something a little more fun and technical for us to dig into next week, but uh, uh, that's going to do it for me this week. So as always, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and click the bell just next to it if you want to get notifications uh, as soon as these are released. So uh, as always, signing off for the HMS Beagle. I'll see you next week, folks.